<sighs> What's up, everybody? And, you know, I got a lot of reviews to get through, but... Um, there are, I'll say this right here, there are live reactions for No Mercy from Sunday. And tonight we're going to get into the review of No Mercy. The SmackDown pay-per-view, which, once again, 9 times out of 10, they make Raw look like clowns most of the time. But it was a little bit different. I didn't see the pre-show. I didn't see Kurt Hawkins with him talking, say he's going to have his match on SmackDown. And I heard the tag match was really great or good or whatever between American Alpha and the Hype Bros versus VOD Villains and and um, the Ascension to what I hear. But the first match of the night was surprisingly, and I know people said this is to, to debate with the presidential debate, was the WWE Championship on the line between AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, and John Cena. <laughs> Pretty much people were so super over for Styles, they both booed at um, Cena and Ambrose, which was pretty much a very great match to open and show to keep the crowd hot. This is the thing, though. It's all hard to keep the crowd going nuts. The whole first match was pretty much hard to follow, especially after a championship match, which was great. And Cena doing double German suplexes and Hurricane Rise out there is insane. Now... Getting to the finish, I was a little bit worried about the finish of the match. Great match, but the finish with the double tap out, really, with Cena and Ambrose doing submissions, and then AJ, it was a little bit lackluster, but he hit Cena with a chair and got the pin. I thought he would Styles clashed him out of that. You know, I am a little surprised John Cena taking another pin from AJ Styles. Again, it's the third one in a row now and stuff, so it's kind of hard to see, you know, Cena taking the loss right there and that Ambrose, him getting pinned. A little, a little bit strange, but they put on a, you know, great match. Styles always killed it out there, so AJ Styles did retain the WWE Championship. Uh, a match hard to follow from this was Nikki Bella and Carmella, which was okay, really. She beat Carmella. I don't think the crowd cared that much. They were just kind of flat. And it was just, come on, they had a tough act to fight. You're following the WWE title match, which they pretty much tore the house down. And, you know, I've said this on this this whole, you know, YouTube thing before. I have trashed the Bellas mostly for many, many multiple reasons. Because I just thought it was, you know, I think it's very asinine that Nikki Bella is supposed to be the sympathetic babyface. And Carmella is the heel. It's just hard. You can't take the Bellas as a face. But I guess the people buying it is somehow. But... Um, she got the win over Carmella, hit the, um, whatever TKO thing with Cena does now, like, moves are really becoming the same, so I just think their gear's coming the same also. Uh, they were talking to Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan in the back, Miz and Marie saying they were gonna take out, uh, Dolph Ziggler at the end of his career. Uh, next was the WWE Tag Team Championship, the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, between Hugh Slater and Rhino versus the Usos. A good match, even though I feel like the Usos lose a lot of matches more than they win. They may hold it off for Survivor Series or something like that. Uh, pretty, pretty much a feel-good match. With our Rhino and Slater, they're still keeping this whole comedy act with them up. We're going to keep it continuing, and we'll see how this goes since it's still over between Slate. They're still, you know, over with Slater and Rhino. I actually kind of thought the Usos were really going to win this match, but they didn't. So, yeah. Uh, next was Swagger and Corbin, which did did no favors, which I felt bored through this match, but it pretty much went to the crowd immediately chanting, this is boring. I know some people think that's not going to be fair with them chanting, this is boring and everything, but I don't think people cared and stuff. And the only thing that was really great was Corbin doing his finisher then because it looked cool, but the crowd looked like they didn't give a crap. The only time they reacted to Swagger really was when he said, we the people, and that was it. But uh, Corbin got the win. It just, I, I, this is what the show started to drag. Because, you know, I'm going to say this right here. This was a two-match show. There was really two biggest matches out of the night. Two, only the two matches were really this great. And we're going to get in that next, which I'm surprised. And this is going to be arguably with a lot of people saying, why wasn't this match the main event? And the match that I'm talking about is the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. 
and you know pretty much career pretty much career versus title match really and this was the match of the night you, you had to love every part I may have said the triple threat was great but this was match of the night it was insane how this match went it could have went either way with especially with Miz just doing everything he could to take out Dolph Ziggler throwing him into the turnbuckle Maurice getting involved, the Spirit Squad getting involved. Even some people say this was a bit of a WrestleMania 20 thing for Eddie Guerrero, because it was Eddie Guerrero's birthday that day, he would have been 49 years old. Viva La Valarasa, uh, they did the boot thing, and uh, Ziggler pretty much hit a super kick on. Uh, he hit a super kick on Miz, pretty much retaining the. Without the boot. Um, Retain the Intercontinental Championship. Not retain, I'm saying become the new Intercontinental Championship, which the crowd went nuts for, really. Because Miz used every underhanded trick he could in the book to take out Ziggler, but Ziggler was able to pretty much get through it and win. Miz is doing these power bombs, even though it was a little um, bad, and doing the Daniel Bryan moves with the drop kicks and the the yes kicks and stuff, just trying to imitate him, thinking he's really going to beat Ziggler. And even Ziggler, even uh, Miz's face at the end. Well, he's, he's just on the ropes looking, didn't know what to do. But Ziggler pretty much won the, he won the match. It was a great moment. It was match of the night. It's odd why this wasn't even a main event. It should have been the main event of the show. The WWE title was going to be the main event of the show. I might as well ended it on a really great note. And even though I felt like Ziggler was winning anyways, because I was like, this is a career versus title match. I'd be really, really surprised if Ziggler actually lost his career tonight on that one. And go somewhere else. Because let's be honest here. They haven't done nothing with those in the past. And buried the guy for nearly three years. With the stupid stuff they do. But hopefully they don't screw this up now. Because you got to wonder now. Since Ziggler is the final champion. What's next? If you just go back to being regular old Dolph Ziggler. And he'll win a match. And he'll just lose a whole bunch of fights. Lose the title back to Miz. I don't know. Because Ziggler has always been up and down in places. And he was, he was that high at one point. But then he just went back to the. He just went to the bottom of the barrel. And now he's on a pedestal where hopefully he can keep his momentum and stay up like this right now. But it was it would have been great to end the show on there, but we had to keep continuing. Which um oh yes, we had to do um stuff from 05 and WCW with Horgan and Warrior with Orton looking in the mirror and did all the screens twisting and turning. It's almost like with him and his he would take her in 05, which just looked he looked really corny. It just looked corny. It wasn't good. Um Another thing, well, there was going to be a women's title match, but Becky Lynch is hurt and won't be able to compete, which they told Alexa Bliss November the 8th in Scotland or whatever for the title on SmackDown. And it will be Alexa Bliss versus her, but since Alexa Bliss had to do a match, she went against Naomi, which was very, honestly, women had bad matches really tonight, just very in tough spots, but it was a very botchable match against Naomi. Naomi even hit, barely hit her rear view, and the ending was just weird. It, what it's like, what a way to make your number one contender look by having her lose the match, even though Becky Lynch wasn't even there to do the match, but she still lost against a whole different person. And, I don't know, Naomi pretty much, it was like a cross-arm breaker, and Naomi pretty much rolled over on Alexa Bliss and got the pin. And people just went on the channel, we want Becky, so it just didn't really do really tough spot. And here's something I'm surprised was the main event, which I didn't give no craps about this for the main event, because it should have never been the main event, really, was Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. So he had two great title matches, you couldn't end on one of those, but we got to end it with these two. And honestly, this match came and went by, I don't know if the crowd cared in that, because even I just, at one point, was just kind of really bored with the match, really. It looked like it was here and there. And even the surprise, which I knew was probably going to be, because everybody thinks it's going to be Sister Abigail, was rumored to be even Marie, which would have been even horrible. But I kind of was thinking it was going to be Luke Harper, which he returned. But Luke Harper was doing house shows for Raw at the time. And people think he was on that roster. But I guess since Rowan got hurt, it was again Luke Harper by himself. So we sent Luke Harper back in and... You know, I think the big thing is that, you know, people are saying that Bray Wyatt finally won a pay-per-view, but then again, some say, you know, he still had help to win since Harper showed up and Wyatt got the move on him then. 
So, I guess when Rowan ever gets well, maybe we'll get all the Wyatt family back, but I don't know. It was just, uh, uh I don't know. Wyatt family and Bray Wyatt himself is just confusing at some time because they ruined these guys so many times and pushed Braun Strowman to I don't know what moon on Raw right now, but none of it doesn't make sense sometimes. Like, Wyatt is just, uh, it's, um, if you finally want to match up, he finally want to match up, it's the same thing and lose, like, I'm neither was you. Why you lie? Lie, lie, lie. Why you lie? Same old shit. But, no mercy. Pretty much was a two match show. The best matches you're going to see tonight was either the Intercontinental title match and the WWE title match. Those are literally the best things you're going to see on this show. Orton and Wyatt was just kind of there, and just the surprise was Harper. The women's matches just were in very tough spots and nobody cared. Swagger versus Corbin was this... Eh. Tag team match was okay. But if you're looking for the best matches of the night, the, just two match show. Intercontinental title match, WWE title match. But uh, that's my review with No Mercy. I enjoyed the pay-per-view most, most of the time and it was really great. But if you really want to check out those matches, those are the main two you need to check out and watch. Because those are the greatest things throughout the whole night. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.